All right, here we go, everybody. The Locked On Crossover Thursday edition on a Wednesday because of Thanksgiving. Locked On Lions host Matt Derry with you on Locked On Lions and Joe Marino, the host of Locked On Bills here on the Thursday crossover for Detroit and Buffalo. Thanksgiving Day at Ford Field. And as always, Crossover Thursday presented by our friends at Price Picks. Price Picks is so much fun. It's easy to play. No competing with other players, just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players that they score more or less then their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It literally can take less than 60 seconds to enter. It is that easy. We love prize picks. We know you will too. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's promo code locked on at prizepicks.com. We got to do it. It's a lot of fun. Prize picks for the Thursday games, Sunday, and of course, Monday Night Football as well. All right, here we go. Lions have won three in a row. Joe Marino, are the Bills, uh, are are they worried coming into Ford Field a second time but facing this red-hot Lions team? Yeah, listen, I think there's some things to be concerned about from the Bills' perspective in in what Detroit has to offer. You mentioned it, a a team that's got some momentum right now, three in a row, and – it's a short week, right? For the bills. I know it's the dome away from home as we're now calling Ford field in in, in Buffalo, but this is a short week against a hot football team. That's physical and competitive. And um, it's always a big deal for the lions to play on Thanksgiving, right? It's a, it's a tradition. It's a big game for them. And so I think there's some dynamics here that are very much favoring Detroit in this ball game, uh, especially for a, a bills team that I think is kind of finding its way offensively right now. And we know the concern with, with uh, Detroit has been kind of their defense. They've had some better moments of late. And so it's going to be a a really interesting matchup. But I think that Detroit has a lot going for them entering this ballgame, despite the Bills being heavy favorites. All right, let's talk storylines, Joe. And let's start with Detroit. And and certainly, like you said it, for the Lockdown Bills listeners, uh, the Lions all of a sudden have a pulse. They've won three in a row. They're making plays at the end of games. They dominated physically. A very physical Giants team this past Sunday. It was very, very impressive. And all of a sudden, this team was one and six, and people were talking about, is Dan Campbell going to even get a third year? And this is a joke, and it's SOL, which here in Detroit is same old Lions. And Mm. yet, they found a way to play well. They've won back-to-back road games for the first time since 2020. They've won three in a row for the first time since 2017. So the storyline is now, here comes one of these elite teams. I know Buffalo's record isn't nine and one or anything. Seven and three is, is still pretty darn good. Can they do this? Can they actually beat... A, a team that they are a heavy underdog to. And you look at the rest of the schedule for the Lions, they're going to be favored in some games coming up, which is unheard of for the past handful of years. So that's kind of the storyline here with Detroit going for that fourth straight win. What about up in Buffalo is obviously, I'm sure the snow and the travel has been the big storyline, right? Well, you hope that stuff's kind of in the past and, and you're in a situation where you can have somewhat of a, a normal opportunity to prepare for this football game. But my biggest storyline is what will this Bills offense look like? Now, the Bills played mistake-free football last week against the Browns. They didn't turn over the ball, and you know they, they came into that game turning over the football on 19% of their offensive drives, number one in the NFL. Well, they're still number one in the NFL. They're down to 17% uh, after their mistake-free game, but they have to continue that way. They have to maintain that mistake-free approach and, and not – put the ball in harm's way and really cost their football team. And so the the turnover issues, will they continue to be uh, at a minimum this week? And then obviously just generally, like I said, what does the offense look like? You're still dealing with Josh Allen with his elbow injury, and that certainly limited him to an extent over the last couple of games. And they really had to adapt a different style of play last week against Cleveland where they ran the football a ton. Both of their running backs had over 80 yards rushing. Devin Singletary and James Cook, and that's not very characteristic for a Bills offense as we've come to know it under Josh Allen. And this team last week, they scored 31 against Cleveland, but that came courtesy of six field goals. And so the Bills were 2 of 5 in the red zone against Cleveland. They were 3 of 11 on third downs. Like I said, they they ran the ball quite a bit. Will this be uh, more like the offense that we've come to know with Josh Allen at quarterback, will it be that dynamic offense that puts a lot of stress on teams, especially throwing the football? Can they take advantage of a Lions defense that has been suspect for a good part of this season? So uh, the story for me is what does this Bills offense look like on a short week? They haven't practiced much 
you know, you think about last week with the snow, the short week this week, uh, of course, coming out of the the game where Josh Allen was injured against the Jets. He really didn't practice that week. So just they're an under-practice team and, and kind of some tough circumstances. So for me, my eyes are going to be on this Bills offense and, and what uh, what they're able to get done on Thursday. If I can follow up with you on the Bills offense, what about these offensive line injuries? Uh, a little concerning right now, is it not? For the Bills on the offensive line, they may be without their center, Mitch Morse. That would be the only one that uh, – would be of a concern. And I, I guess I'd extend the same question back to you. I know uh, Frank Ragno is dealing with an injury. Evan Brown didn't finish last week. Uh, the right guard, Dan Skipper, had to come in and play. What's what's your uh, pulse for the injuries there on the middle of that offensive line? Well, forget that. I, I think those guys are going to be okay. I don't think Evan Brown's going to play, but I, I would look at Jeff Okuda as being the big one. Mm-hmm. Uh, in concussion protocol, no way he's going to be ready to play on Thursday. And that's a huge loss. And we'll talk about some of the matchups coming up momentarily. But that's one that I think the Bills have a huge advantage in with Okuda out. And uh, that's that's a concern for the Lions for sure because, like you said, wanting to get the, the, the Bills offense kind of going, especially in the red zone, uh, you're talking about the best corner on this Lions team um, not being there. Locked on Lions, locked on Bills. The crossover edition as we get ready for Thanksgiving Day. And, which should be a very, very entertaining game at Ford Field, the second straight appearance for the Bills at Ford Field. We will get to some of those key matchups coming up next, but this crossover Thursday edition and Locked on Lions and Locked on Bills today is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Life doesn't come with a user manual. We know that. So when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. You want to talk to somebody. You want to figure out, hey, should I get some help and and, and try out some therapy? Well, BetterHelp is the place. uh, Therapists that are trained to help you Figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and it's accessible anytime, anywhere, 100% online. Whether or not you've been in therapy personally, I'm telling you, I have, and it's it's great. It's good to talk to somebody and get that help, and that's what BetterHelp provides um, just a peace of mind. Everyone deserves to feel their best, right? BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. They're the world's largest therapy service. They've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, no waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more, save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on matt dairy locked on lions joe marino from locked on bills joe i'm a fan of yours uh you you have not spoken that much but i love your work on the draft network and all the prep that you do is uh you know as you know this joe uh lions draft coverage is pretty much (laughs) 10 months out of the year we're usually in december i'm trying to get you or or, or Trev, or some of the guys, uh, the the old locked on, uh, the old draft network guys, Jordan Reed, all those guys that used to try to get on all the time, because we would be talking draft in December. The Bills have been good for a while now, so you haven't had to do that. No, I appreciate that, Matt, and and uh, you know I, we don't have to talk about the draft today. We're talking about <laughs> a Lions team that is very much um, in it, right? You start stacking wins, like you mentioned at the top. The schedule looks pretty favorable, and so you start stacking wins, you steal one here and there. And um, we'll see how it all ends. I'm not going to get ahead of it because I, I I understand, you know, what's been kind of the history of the, of the Lions. But uh, there's a lot to like about how this team is positioned, especially with some of these young players on defense. No, I don't think there's uh, there's any question about it. And it's been fun watching the Bills play. Uh, when, you, when you look at matchups, what jumps out to you on Thursday that can be something big for for the road team? I look at this Bills pass rush against the Lions offensive line, and and I think we can all agree that they got some outstanding tackles with Taylor Decker and, and Penny Sewell, who I think is one of the brightest young offensive linemen in the game. Frank Rag now a top tier center, uh, but we'll see what happens at those guard spots. I and mean, Jonah Jackson at one spot, he'll be fine. But at, at right guard, if that's going to be a Dan Skipper situation, I think the Bills will have some opportunities there to to create some pressure. And I think pressure on Jared Goff is is absolutely critical for the Bills in this game. Uh, Jared Goff, when he's kept clean, he's got a passer rating of 106.2. That's sixth best in the NFL when kept clean. When he's pressured, his passer rating goes down to 58.7. That's 29th in the NFL. That's a pretty drastic swing, and he loses 25% on his completion percentage, 71% when he's kept clean, 45% when he's under pressure. And so 
I think the Bills defensive tackles, Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, Tim Settle, Jordan Phillips, they're going to be really important for this game, particularly with that interior pressure to get after Jared Goff. And I know that's going to be tough sledding for the Bills at uh, on the edges with, you know, Von Miller's a great player, but, you know, Penny Sewell's a great player and Taylor Decker's a good player. And they're probably going to be down Greg Rousseau and A.J. Epinesa, who is their second and third defensive end. Uh, so it's going to put a lot more on those interior guys. And I think uh, the Bills' ability to affect Jared Goff with pressure in his face is, is one of my key elements that I'm paying attention to on Thursday. I think it's a great one. Uh, Lions offensive line has been really solid. Uh, uh, not that the Giants had a great pass rush. Obviously, Kayvon is, is sort of a guy that everybody in Detroit was watching to see how he would do. Is he, he finished 30 points behind Aiden Hutchinson on Sunday from the PFF score department. You didn't even know Kayvon was on the field because that offensive line and the tight ends, Mitchell, Brock Wright, even when he was in the game, uh, Shane Zilster, the third stringer, they did a great job protecting golf, like you said. Um but with that being said, I'm going to the other side of the ball. And like we talked about, Jeff Okuda is so good against Stefan, uh, has de- done a decent job in the past against Stefan Diggs. Um, I'm interested in watching without Okuda how Amani Oruarie does because he's been a dog. He's been awful. And he has to play. I mean, Jerry Jacobs will play, Will Harris, um, uh, certainly Mike Hughes in the slot. But Amani having to play and maybe getting matched up with Diggs or at any time Davis. Uh, is a big concern for me. The other thing, too, is without Okuda, what I really like that Jeff did well and he's been improving on is his tackling. And he did a good job on Justin Fields a couple times. Uh, This past Sunday before he got hurt, Daniel Jones running, and Okuda comes up and is good in run support. Josh Allen, as we know, and you watch every game, is just so good on the ground that that's going to be a concern for me is I think if I'm the Bills, I'm watching some of the tape of what Fields did two weeks ago what Danny Dimes did this past week, and I'm dialing up some 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 quarter, quarterback draws. I know the Bills don't do this backyard football crap like the Bears do, <laughs> uh, uh, but but maybe some design runs. And if they were, if Aiden Hutchinson comes around the edge and and Allen's running, I'm a little concerned that the Lions are not going to be able to get him down, or or he'll scamper for a third and nine and get eleven or get twelve. Uh, I just I really love the way Okuda's playing and tackling. And I think that that's going to be a big loss for Detroit. I, I, I'd agree with you. I've enjoyed watching Jeff Akuda this year and, and certainly enjoyed that young safety you got there, Kirby Joseph. He looks like a stud, uh, obviously physically gifted, a, a player that didn't have a ton of experience coming out of Illinois. But you knew he had size, length, and ball skills, and that's showing up. He's tackling. So I've really enjoyed watching Kirby Joseph as well as Jeff Akuda for that secondary Matt, if I could squeeze one more in here, I'm yeah. really interested in how this Bills defense is going to hold up against what I think is a very potent Lions offense that has a lot of creativity and great architecture behind the scheme that they run there. I'm very, very impressive, uh, very, very impressed with Ben Johnson and what he's been able to do with this Lions offense. I mean, I, I've that's one of the biggest messages that I've tried to preach on Locked On Bills this week is don't just assume anything here that or, or under, underestimate this offense. They've scored points. They've moved the football all year long, 25 points per game. That's eighth in the NFL in scoring. Uh, they're, they're number six in total offense. So it's been a situation all year long where they've moved the football, and that, in, that includes a stretch, a, a two-week stretch, where they got shut out against the Patriots and, and get, scored only six against the Cowboys. They're still averaging 25 points per game. And, and so for a Bills defense that – Week to week, it's just been who's playing. They've had so many injuries, and the Bills over the last several years have been fortunate to be a very healthy football team, but uh, their good luck has definitely been turned upside down this year, and I don't think the Bills are going to have their starting middle linebacker, Tremaine Edmonds, who's a difference maker. And, you know, we'll see, Greg Rousseau, a starting defensive end, likely won't play in this football game. And, you know, what corners are going to play? Is Kyer Elam going to be available? Uh, Jordan Poyer on one arm. You know, there's just a lot of dynamics here with this Bills defense. Uh, against a, a Lions offense that I, I think is obviously going to want to run the football. They do that quite well, but also an opportunistic passing game that they have. I mean, top 11 in yards per game. They're good situationally. Uh, 71% scoring red touchdowns in the red zone. That's top five in the league. Pretty decent on third downs. And so I think they're well coached, and and I don't think that they're not they're necessarily having this production offensively because they have – just an amazing cast of players. They got a good no. offensive line, but yeah, no. th- this is a really well coached offensive football team. I'm excited about Amon Ross St. Brown and and you know him being a star receiver already and what he's you know what this offense is going to look like when you get Jamison and Williams back. So there's a lot to like about this Detroit Lions offense and and I'm really interested in seeing 
how the Bills defense can hold up because they, they've they're statistically a very very good defense, but uh, there's been a lot of attrition when it comes to injuries and you know like I said, short week on the road. Um, I'm sure that the Lions are going to have some things ready for this ball game and, and put a lot of stress on Buffalo defensively. So big storyline for me is how the Bills defense is going to hold up against a very good Lions offense. I'm a big Milano fan. I, I love Matt Milano, and, and I think that uh, he kind of does everything well, don't you think, Joe? And um, Lions running the football, I was I was very impressed, and I was stunned at how poorly the Giants uh, played with run support, linebackers coming up. Uh, Lions dominated that interior of the uh, Giants D line for the most part, and Jamal Williams, uh, DeAndre Swift, who's been having a weird season. He mm-hmm. he misses holes sometimes, and may, something's going on with him because he's not getting the touches either. Because I think the coaches have had enough of some of these mistakes he makes. But then Justin Jackson comes in and gets seventy yards. So uh, Lions run game will, again will be a, will be a big catalyst because then that sets up Jared Goff to play mistake free football. You get him, uh, Joe, in the third and 11s, third and 12. Some of the stats you you gave will come, will come down, but it hasn't been that way for the past few weeks. Lines have been uh, very effective on offense, like you said, and Ben Johnson uh, deserves a lot of credit. All right, let's get to some predictions. We will do that coming up next. I've been picking the Lions to win the last couple of weeks. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to go there this time. We, we shall see. Uh, but first and foremost, we've got to tell you about our friends at Bet Online. Got to talk about Bet Online, folks, because they are the number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Football to basketball to soccer, World Cup going on right now, and esports. They've got it all at betonline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at Bet Online as well. Always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. You look up at betonline.net. You want to see the Bills? Are they nine point favorites? Nine and a half. Whatever the spread is, it's exact and accurate right there at BetOnline each and every day when you want to see what the trends are. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, it is where the game starts. And hey, Matt and Joe, with you on this crossover edition of Locked On Lions today, we got to tell you about also our friends at Simply Safe. If you thought about securing your home with home security but have been putting it off, you'll want to listen up right now. Locked on Lions, Locked on Bills listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you won't want to miss it. And here's why I love it it's simple. People are like on board with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week if you need them. Monitoring agents, that's the best. If something's fishy with your house, you're not home, you'll get a phone call, you'll get a text, you share. Share something each and every time that, that, that you think something's wrong and simply save it your home. And they demonstrate the safety to you and to your home. And it's great. All right. I love that about Simply Safe. Their 24 7 monitoring agents are awesome. They were named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for a third year in a row. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get priority police response. Don't miss your chance to save big on this only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com/slash locked on NFL. There's no safe like Simply Safe. I'm at Derry, Joe Marino, Locked On Lions, Locked On Bills, Thanksgiving Day, 1230. CBS, Buffalo 7-3. The all of a sudden in the playoff picture. Did I really say that? Detroit Lions <laughs> at 4-6. and six. Joe, what do you got? What, do you, what are you thinking for uh, Thursday as the Bills come back to Ford Field? They're, uh, like you said, second home now. This is, uh, like I said, there's, a, there's some... There's some caution that I have from the Bills' perspective in this ballgame. I think there's, there's a lot to like for Detroit in this one. I don't know that I'm at the point where I would pick Detroit to win it. So where where I have this game is I'll, I'll give you the score and then I'll kind of give you my rationale. Yeah. My score prediction is Bills 31, Lions 24. I think it just kind of comes down to this Bills team being a more complete veteran team. And you think about it being a short week and on the road and Thanksgiving. Well, Thanksgiving games are not really a new thing for the Bills. It's not like the, the Lions every year, but – the Bills are not going to play three of the last four years on Thanksgiving, and two, you know, the, the, every time it's been on the road, they've they've done this before. They went to Dallas in 2019. They went to New Orleans last year, and they had some very decisive wins in those games. And so, I think that this is a team that's well equipped for the dynamics of playing on the road. 
uh, on Thanksgiving. Uh, last week against the Browns, uh, the Bills' ability to run the ball and stop the run was very significant in my belief that they can handle this ball game. Uh, both of their running backs, James Cook and Devin Singletary, had 86 yards rushing against Cleveland. And I know Cleveland's got a bad run defense, but the Bills had oh. only seven yards from uh, Josh Allen. And typically when you talk about the Bills' run game, it's all, well, Josh Allen accounts for a lot of that. Well, not last week. Uh, only seven yards from Josh Allen. And uh, they averaged more yards per carry against Cleveland than Cleveland's given up that year. And now we're talking about a, a, a Lions run defense that has really struggled this year. I think they're giving up 5.2 yards per carry. And so that ability to run the ball for Buffalo inspires me, but also stopping the run where the Bills held Nick Chubb to 19 yards on 14 carries last week. And so th that's that's a big deal for my belief that they can – they can manage a really good Lions offense. And then I just look at this young secondary that Detroit has without their top corner and Jeff Akuda against uh, what, what should be a dynamic passing offense from the Bills and can put a lot of stress on on all of those players. And so I like some of those matchups. And I recognize that there's some neutralizers for sure from the Lions side of things. I've been through that uh, already in this discussion. But I, I think that the Bills will uh, win a consecutive game here at Ford Field, 31-24 to 24 on, on Thanksgiving afternoon. I'm with you on the Bills. I, I think they're going to win. I think they're going to put up 31 points. That's the score I had as well. I think the Lions only have about 16 or 17. I don't think it's as close as, as you have it. Detroit has battled. Detroit plays hard every week. Dan Campbell's done a nice job to get them back and uh, off the mat here from 1-6 and six to 4-6, and six, but no Jeff Okuda. Uh, they sold out last week, the Lions did against the run, knowing that they were trying to dare Daniel Jones and and and, and Wandale and some of those young Giants receivers to do something. And other than Wandale Robinson, they, they had nothing. And with Bellinger out, that was huge for the Lions as well to not have to deal with a starting tight end. Dawson Knox is playing the last time I checked. Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis are playing the last time I checked. I just think the Lions can't do that this week. I don't think they can get up there and sell out to try to stop your backs like they did with Saquon last week. Uh, they may try it, but I just, I think this is a different opponent. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I think the Lions certainly maybe will come out and play well, but I think in the end, I'm looking 31-17 Buffalo. I just think the Bills are too good. I think the Lions, I'm not saying they're due for a clunker, but they've played really well the last few weeks. But I think, unfortunately, this this win streak comes to an end. they got Jacksonville coming up, a very winnable game. And I think they could beat the Vikings at home. They should have beaten Minnesota on the road. So to look and go, hey, maybe they go 2-1 on the homestand here. I just don't think that W is coming this week against a Super Bowl contender like, like the Bills. So I'll say about 31-17, Joe. Well, I guess we see it pretty similarly. And, and look, I, I, I guess I've tried to weave into this conversation a lot of uh, admiration that I do have for Detroit and what's going on there under Brad I love and it. Dan Campbell. I love it. And, I mean, we didn't even get to really talk about Aiden Hutchinson and the season that he's having, and and I gave him flowers this week on the podcast. Aleem McNeil was phenomenal against the Giants, one of my favorite young yeah, defensive tackles in the game. So there's there's a lot to really like about Detroit. I'm sure there's been – there maybe Lions fans are a little numb to hearing stuff like that, but I, <laughs> I, 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 like, I like the direction here. I like – you know, the NFC's a, a conference that feels like there's a lot of opportunity, and, and the Lions are a little ahead of the curve – when you consider some of the other teams that are, are rebuilding it at right now. So um, as a, I know not recently, but as a long suffering fan base, I can tell you that Bill's mafia uh, would like nothing more than the Detroit lions to get it right and be one of the best teams in the league. Joe it was a lot of fun, my friend. Uh, thanks for doing this, a special uh, Wednesday slash Thursday crossover for Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll talk again soon. I appreciate it, Matt. Thank you. Joe Marino, Locked On Bills. Matt Derry, Locked On Lions, your Thursday crossover. Getting you ready for the Thanksgiving Day game. The early game at Ford Field, Lions and the Bills. Check out Locked On Sports today with our buddy Peter Pagowski as well and make that your second listen as, of course, you always make Locked On Bills with Joe and Locked On Lions with me your first listen. Have a great holiday, everybody.